your volume up. Did you do that or did he? Hey, John. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Chef? Is it? There's a couple people on. It looks like I can only. There we go. Full screen. You good. Yep. If I can't get the gallery view, please. Sorry. That's all right. Okay. I think. Hi. How you doing? Good. John, so John, I don't have video for you. Yeah, I don't know why. All I'm seeing in my little screen, the uh, the still video. Yeah, that that's supposed to be. Um, yeah. Until we um, go live. Let me see. I thumbnail. So we're gonna go live on Facebook now. I'll start talking, but we won't start cooking until you guys are ready. Oh, I see why you can't see me. There you go. There he is. I had my Bill Gates secret tip. <laughs> All right, so we are live on Facebook. Um, Sandy's computer is not uh, on audio. I think it's muted right now. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I can Loud now, yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, so welcome to Taco Tuesday. Um, originally, I was planning on having Pancho and Joel do the tacos, but uh, due to some scheduling conflicts, you're stuck with me. So I hope that's okay, and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun. So today we're making sriracha shrimp tacos. In your meal kit, you should have gotten shrimp, uh, our homemade taco seasoning, oil, sriracha, mayonnaise, Napa cabbage, an apple, and cilantro. And oh, obviously the tortillas. Um, so to make these tacos, the steps we're gonna go through is we're gonna marinate our shrimp and then we'll go ahead and make our slaw. Then we'll cook our shrimp, cook our tortillas, and then we'll build the tacos. So it should be pretty easy from a technical side, um, and we should have fun. So pour yourselves a drink, and we'll get going in a second. I know the rules. I know you guys have to have a drink when we – there it is. See, I told you. We're ready now. <laughs> All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to marinate the shrimp. Uh, and that's just a matter of pouring uh, the oil over the shrimp and the, the taco seasoning. And for the seasoning, you could use as much as little as you want. I use about half. Um, and then just stir this around and just let them sit. And we'll come back to these. Uh, the reason I like to use half is sometimes I like to add a little more seasoning when I cook them. Uh, but right now for this step, you're good. So it should just be nice and marinated and just sitting and we could set this aside until we need them later. Now, is the spices spicy? No, no, they have, they have a little bit of heat to them, but it's cumin, garlic, uh, a little bit of crushed red pepper, paprika. Um, but no, I wouldn't consider it spicy. Okay, and I have four oil. You want me to use all four? No, you won't need all four. Uh, I would use probably two at the most. If you're doing four, you're doing four meal kits, or two? Two. I don't know why I've got three oils, but two meal kits. Uh, start with one. As long as your shrimp is evenly coated, we can add more oil to the pan later when we cook. Okay. Okay. So the spice and the oil on the shrimp, let it sit. Correct. Okay. Now this, this, this mix, this whole kind of process here is great if you're grilling shrimp, if you're going to do them in a pan. Um, I love taco seasoning because I love cumin. I love garlic. I love... Uh, a little bit of spice, you know, there's some oregano in this. Uh, so it's really fantastic. It works really well. Now for our next step, we're gonna go ahead and make our slaw. So I'm gonna take the camera down here so you can see what we're doing. 
you got a nice clear view of my board and we can start cooking together. So take your cabbage and just julienne it. Julienne just means sliced. It's just a fancy way of doing it. So people think that uh, I know what I'm talking about. And then you wanna leave this part, this, this core, if you have it on your piece of cabbage, don't use this. I love cabbage cores. I cook with them a lot. Um, like if I'm doing a whole cabbage steak, I'll actually put this in a pan and saute it and eat the core. But in a slaw, it's not as nice. We're gonna half our lime. We're gonna use half now and half later when we cook the shrimp, okay? Half the lime. Here's some here's some nice. Just like that? Yeah, that was like that, yeah. Okay. And now in a bowl, you're gonna put the mayonnaise. We're gonna put now the sriracha is spicy, so depending on how much you want. I'm going to use all the sriracha because I like a lot of sriracha because um, we're going to add some apples to this, some lime juice. There's going to be a lot of things that will sweeten it up and kind of counteract that spiciness. But if spicy isn't really your thing, use a little bit less. You want to mix this really good. And we're going to add a squeeze of the one half of the lime. So get as much juice in there as you can. Thank you for this sauce here. The sriracha is the red sauce, yes. So this should be pretty loose, almost like a salad dressing consistency. And this will be a great coating on our slaw. I guess I probably need to double up here. Now you can save this, uh, say you don't want your slaw to be as uh, mayonnaise-y. You could save this and dip chips in it. You could dip veggies in it, it's great. It's a little spicy, you know, sriracha lime dip. Now we're gonna add the cabbage to that. Uh, no, the big glass bowl on the, on the table, the bottom glass bowl is the big one. And then let me know when you guys are caught up. We'll do the apple next. Okay. Uh, don't add all of it because I think we'll sink for tomorrow because we won't need all this coleslaw. So just add something. All right. So to slice our apple, you want to take your apple, put this side down so it's nice and flat. It's not going to roll around on you much, right? This way we're staying safe. You want your knife to be somewhat sharp. And then you're going to slice it into discs. Okay, so they're about that thick. And then we're going to take our discs and do a matchstick cut. So keep them flat. You can stack them and just straight down. This is going to add some crunch to the slaw, some sweetness. It's going to play nicely on the sriracha. It's going to be delicious with the shrimp. You can use any kind of apple you want. I like honey crisps and galas. Um, some people like green apples because they, they stay a little crunchier and they're a little more tart. It's honestly to your preference. It should be coming here, but it's not. <clears throat> and then these will go into the slot. You're just gonna mix it up. You can make any kind of flavored mayo you want. Um, 
you know, there's times at home I'll even take a really great salad dressing I love and I'll mix it with mayonnaise and that'll be a dip or, or a topping for a sandwich or, or a taco. Um, so if you let this sit for say 10, 15 minutes, it's gonna soften a little bit, but not get too soggy. Uh, and then you can just taste it for salt and see if you wanna add any. I'm gonna add a little bit. You'll see it's got a nice acidity, a nice zing from the sriracha, a sweetness from the apple. And then we're gonna set this aside. So it should look like that. Yep. No, I think it's more than enough. All right. So for our next step, I'm going to go ahead and cook the shrimp. Got to cook the shrimp. You want to get your pan nice and hot. So give it some time to heat up. Uh, I'm on a medium high heat. Uh, well, if you're at home, be on a uh, medium high heat. Here I'm on a high because I'm using a little dinky portable burner, but I want to make sure you can see what's what's going on here. So I'm allowing my pan to heat up. Now, depending on how your shrimp looks, if you look at these shrimp, there's a good amount of oil in here. I don't need to add oil to the pan. If the shrimp are a little more dry looking, you can add a little bit of oil just to glaze the bottom of the pan. But I'm gonna go ahead and dump these right in once my pan's hot and they should start cooking beautifully. I love cooking shrimp at home because I feel like it's one of those things that you just, you never get around to cooking at home and they're so good. So just like with all our other principles of cooking, we don't want uh, all of our stuff piled up together. You wanna leave some room. So when we put the shrimp in, I'm gonna take a spoon and get in there and move it around so it has some space to release some moisture too. So all, that, all that steam coming off, that's all water from inside the shrimp. And that's all gonna keep these from getting brown and delicious. Now for cooking the shrimp, people always ask, you know, hey, how do I know if my shrimp's done? You know, uh, I always feel like it's undercooked. I always feel like it's rubbery. Um, your shrimp right now has that kind of glassy, opaque look to it. When you cook it through, it shouldn't have that weird shine anymore. Uh, that kind of gel-like look. It should be one smooth color. You don't want it to be like stark white where it's uh, mealy and grainy. You just want to make sure it's cooked all the way through so it's succulent. Now, we're gonna cook these about three quarters of the way through and pull them off the heat because they're gonna to continue to cook in the pan. So if I were to just take it off uh, and leave it in the pan, it's gonna carry over and cook. And we don't want rubbery dry shrimp because there is a point where shrimp do get dry. Uh, now when they're cooking, you can move them a little if you want to see how they're starting to pick up color. But like this guy's just starting to get a little color and I want that difference in consistency. I wanna be able to have that, that uh, Oh, that, that caramelization to it and that almost dry feeling and then inside is all that juiciness. So I'm gonna allow them to just continue to cook on one side until they start to pick up that color. Do not get as close to your pan as I am right now because I feel like I just lost an eyeball and probably an eyeball. Um, so you can see as I'm starting to flip them now, they start, they've gotten a little bit of color. And that's what I'm looking for. You can start to really smell those spices toasting and you know, the shrimp are cook, cooking. Um, they're changing color, which is great. And they're starting to, the proteins are starting to coagulate. So you're starting to see the shrimp curl up, uh, which is a great sign. So once I flip them, I'm gonna let them cook here for one minute. And like I said, I'm just gonna pull it off to the side. 
But the only reason I got all this color is because I allowed enough space in the pan for all this steam to escape. Uh, because water and natural sugar or any kind of sugar uh, mixed will not make caramel. And we want the natural caramel caramelization on the, the shrimp. So I'm going to take these off now and put them all together into one area. Take them off the heat. Squeeze the fresh lime on top. And that's going to give just a great acidity and cut through the fattiness of the shrimp. And then I'm going to take my second pan and start heating it up. So these shrimp can sit aside. We're done with them for right now. Uh, so you guys go ahead and cook your shrimp and get them nice and delicious and beautiful. Remember, you want that beautiful color in there. And you want to be able to smell all those toasted spices. I'm not sure. What's the question? Um, yeah, um, when the shrimp is done, you just push them to the side, you said? Yes. Yeah. yeah, just take that whole pan and just set it aside. Okay. So the next step, we're going to we're gonna uh, cook our tortillas. Okay. Um, no, I think I think we're using the same pan, though. Okay. Uh, we're, we're using a new pan. Oh, new pan, okay. You can use the same pan, but then your tortillas are going to get greasy. They're going to get all that spice on there and shrimp juice. Uh, okay. So I like to start in a new pan. So once this pan's hot, don't test the heat of your pan like this. I have asbestos fingers. Drop a tortilla in. Hey, tomorrow night steak, steak cooking classes at my house, so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, when you're doing tortillas, uh, this goes the same for flour and corn tortillas. You put them in the hot pan. You don't need any oil. You just want to get them nice and toasted on both sides, and then they're going to soften enough to fold and not fall apart. So, so chef, I bought some flour. So you said the same thing. We'll do the corn same first, thing. and then, then the flour. Yeah. Okay. Now, when your tortillas are done, you can put them just on a plate and cover them with a kitchen towel or something, and they'll continue to steam and, and hold as you cook the rest of the tortillas. If you have one of those little tortilla holders, that obviously works best, but. Uh, at home, I just use a, a kitchen towel. Towel, fresh towel. Oh, okay. But you should feel it should be pretty bendable now, bendy, bendelicious, however you want to say it. And then you put it here and, and just cover it with that towel, and then we do it to the next one. So there's all different kinds of tortillas you could buy. There is a difference in quality. Um, you know, these are really nice. They're very street taco-esque. They have that raw corn flavor. When you toast them up, they, they, they don't get a lot of color, but they get a phenomenal flavor. Um, you can use flour tortillas, blue corn tortillas. You can use anything you want. Um, I prefer these ones personally, but that's just, that's just me. Um, like the El, El Milagro brand they have at the store is great. Um, they also have some really awesome health conscious options. Like at home, we buy cashew flour ones, cassava flour tortillas, um, and they're they're really wonderful. I was a little uh, hesitant at first, but then once we started eating them and you toast them properly, they're great. So let me know when your tortillas are all done and warm, and we will build our tacos. Okay, can you tell me yours is one? Let's start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Want to get two plates? And then maybe two bowls. Let's divide this in half. So I will put apples in my half and not your half. So when you're building tacos, I think it's always a good idea to double tortilla, um, especially as you get into juicier fillings and all that. You want to make sure that one tortilla could fall apart, but two can hold together um, and make sure that, you know, they're not going to get all soggy on you. So you're going to add your shrimp, just evenly distribute about six shrimp in each one. And since we have the double tortilla, you can add a touch of that juice, but you don't want to put too much. Um, because then again, they'll get soggy. Next step will be to top with the slaw. As much or as little as you like. These are your tacos, so you can, you can do them up however you see fit. And then for a little bit of freshness, we're gonna to top it with some fresh uh, cilantro that you just pick off the stem. Now you can do the same recipe with, with fish. I love, I love cod for a taco. I think it's a great sweet fish. Um, sea bass is Chilean sea bass, a little more expensive, but also beautiful and buttery. Um, but really wonderful. You guys could see. Yeah. How's it coming over there? Good. You guys ready to open your own taquerias yet? <laughs> Not, Not quite. Not quit my day job. Ah, you're probably almost there. I love uh, one of the best things about working in kitchens is is the amount of tacos that that are eaten, and the different things that people come up with to actually put inside them is wonderful. I mean. They're not any healthier than a sandwich. People think wraps and tortillas are healthier. They're not, <laughs> um, but uh, you like to think so and you can make them pretty delicious. You guys, you guys shrimp all cooked looking delicious? Yep. Good. Good, good, good. We got it. Let me see. Look at that. So, little Taco Tuesday salute, huh? Enjoy, Absolutely. guys. Cheers. Have fun. Thank you guys for coming. This is great. I'm going to, I'm going to eat these because I, I absolutely love them. Thank you much. Have okay. a good one. Good night. Thanks chef. Bye. See ya.